And joining me live is AMP Capital Chief Economist Shane Oliver. Good to chat to you again, Shane. So what the, do these latest inflation figures tell us about the shape of our economy, considering it's still above the target of 2 or 3%? Yeah, it's certainly still above the target, but it's going in the right direction. Uh, a year ago, inflation peaked at 8.4% at the end of 2022. It's now 4.3%. It's coming down in the last couple of months. It's been coming down faster than expected. Yes, it's still too high, but it is going in the right direction. And we're starting to catch up with the sort of circa 3% numbers for inflation that we're seeing in Europe and the US. So you have to see these numbers as good news, given where we've come from. We are going in the right direction. Inflation is starting to come under control. But yes, we've still got a, a little way to go yet before we can uh, declare victory on this one. Yeah, and what do you think? Does that put a nail in the coffin for further rate rises? Do you think the RBA will be happy to see inflation moderating at current interest rates or, or they won't need the, feel the need to raise them again? I, I read that the RBA expects inflation to fall to 3.5% by the end of the year and below 3% uh, by the end of next year. So what do you think the RBA is thinking at this present moment? Well, I think the RBA would be feeling quite happy at present. Uh, going into Christmas, they were still warning that they may have to raise rates again. Uh, they'd made that that uh, that tightening bias, if you want to call it that, dependent on the economic data. But the economic data, particularly in regards to inflation, is going in the right direction. I think these numbers are probably below what they were expecting. Uh, they were forecasting 4.5% uh, inflation for the end of last year. Looks like we're coming in well below that. Uh, and likewise, their forecast for 3.5% inflation this year and then not reaching 3% till the end of 2025, they look a little bit too, a bit, bit on the high side. So I think when we see their revised forecast come the February meeting, that they will have actually revised down their inflation forecasts. So consequently, they won't feel the need to raise rates again. They'll probably still remain cautious. They'll probably warn they may have to do more. There are issues still out there with services uh, insurance is a big one, and of course, there's ongoing upwards pressure on rents. Electricity prices are still an issue, um, but against that, there's lots of areas in the economy where we're starting to see weakness in terms of prices. So, I think that's consistent with the RBA leaving rates on hold and, and starting to cut rates probably in June. Just breaking down the numbers a little further, uh, a lot of the inflation came from housing costs. But falling oil and fuel prices contributed to a lot of that reduction in the CPI figure. And interestingly, electricity prices rose 8.8% .8 since June 2023, and excluding the rebate, such as the Energy Bill Relief Fund, electricity prices would have increased 19% over that period. So that gives some interesting insight, doesn't it? It certainly does. It does tell us that the uh, Energy Bill Rebate, or Relief, as it was called, um, has helped in keeping inflation down, helping down, keep down costs for those who are eligible uh, for that support. So that's worked. Likewise with rents. Uh, rents are going up. I think 7% would have been a faster increase were it not for uh, rental subsidies to, to some home, uh, to some renters. So those things are certainly helping. Childcare is another one where subsidies have helped keep uh, childcare costs down. So those things are helping to lower inflation. Um, I know there's a concern amongst economists that when you pump subsidies into the economy, it, it, it's effectively a fiscal stimulus. But I think the more important point is to help get those inflation numbers down. And that's what those, uh, those stimulus measures or those support measures have been helping to do. Uh, and so that's working. But even beyond that, um, of course, those increases are still very high. You know, you're still seeing strong growth in rents and electricity. Um, but beyond that, we are seeing weakness come through an area like clothing and household equipment. And when you allow for the fact that Australians are now very focused on uh, keeping their shopping, focused on where they can get a discount, Black Friday uh, sales, for example, um, it's likely we're going to see more weakness there. And I don't think we yet see the full effect in these inflation numbers from the Black Friday discounts. So there's probably more downside to come. In fact, uh, once the very high inflation numbers that we saw at the end of December last year drop out of the annual calculations, we're likely to see annual inflation for the year ended December last year dropped down to around 3.5%, possibly 3.3%. So there's more mm. downside to come as the very high numbers a year ago drop out. Shane Oliver, thanks for breaking down the figures for us this morning. My pleasure. Thank you.